Hands down, the most important prep that you're going to have to work on during 2022 is going to be food. We need to be stockpiling food and we need to get more and more of it put away. With everything going on in the world right now, food is easily gonna be one of the hardest things to come by if things don't change quickly. And you can already see it in your grocery stores. When you go there right now, I challenge you to actually look for some of the non-brand name foods, the very inexpensive ones that a lot of people rely on in low income houses. Households. And I will tell you that right now, if you were to go look for those, you won't find hardly anything. It's because this all affects people with less money first, and it affects them the most. And then you and I will be paying more because we will lose access to things that are less expensive. And then things will just climb up the ladder because eventually the people who usually buy the lesser known brands or the less expensive food are going to have to reach up to the next tier in order to get what they need to survive. And that's why food is such a big deal here in 2022. So. Today, I'm going to actually start sealing up more and more food because you really can't have enough now, can you? So I'll give you some quick tips and tricks as to how I'm going to seal my food in Mylar bags and make it as easy as possible for anybody who wants to store food away for a very long time. Because it doesn't have to be as complicated as some of the information that's out there regarding food storage. And it'll get you in the door for spending as little money as possible while still being able to seal up food put it away for 20 plus years and know that you have something you can count on and rely on no matter what happens here during 2022. So we'll go ahead and get started. Obviously you're gonna need things like five gallon buckets, the lids for the buckets, you're gonna need for this project specifically, 2000 cc oxygen absorbers because I'm gonna be using five gallon Mylar bags. Basically what's nice about this setup is that each bucket is one container of one food type and then that puts it away for 20 plus years, makes everything super easy. You're gonna need a hair iron or a, a, a straightener so that way you can actually clamp the bags closed and then you're also gonna want a way to label things. So I label the bags themselves but you can also then label the buckets with something removable so that way if they change purpose or something later on down the road. You don't get stuck with a bucket that's got a million things written all over it. And then obviously a Sharpie is going to be your best friend. And then dry goods is what we're sealing up today because that's a big deal. Now before I start showing you exactly how I'm going to do this process, just keep in mind that yes, you can put food in a freezer for a few days if you want to make sure that there's nothing alive still left in that food, aka maybe eggs of certain bugs and stuff like that. Or if you're like me and live in North Dakota, you can just put the food outside for a day or two at negative 25 degrees, and then you're good to go. So let's get started. I'll get this all sealed up real quick here for you. You can kind of see my process. And this is the first of the year, and this is why I'm doing this right now, because you know what? Starting every year with sealing up more food and putting more food away for long-term storage is a great way to start the year. And especially in 2022 or 2022, whatever you want to say, this is gonna be something that's very important. So let's go ahead and get started sealing up the food. Very simple process, I'll walk you right through it. And if you want more tips like this here in the future, or if you just wanna stay prepared and ahead of the game, then hit that subscribe button below because it definitely helps the channel grow. And I think that there are certain forces at work lately that don't wanna necessarily see that happen. Now you might ask, what's the purpose of the five gallon bucket? Can I just seal this stuff up, throw it in some Tupperware containers, or what's the whole deal here, right? So you want the five gallon bucket because it gives you a nice tight seal when it comes to putting the lid on, and it protects your Mylar from rodents. Because basically rodents can get into just about anything, but one thing they definitely seem to not want to try to do is eat through five gallon buckets. So I use buckets for two reasons. One, it protects the food within the Mylar due to the fact that the Mylar is just not strong enough to hold up to rodent things. And at the same time, it creates a very portable unit that's easy to carry one handed if need be. So those are things I like to keep in mind. And it's definitely why I choose the five gallon bucket route. Now we're gonna be taking a five gallon Mylar bag, which I will post links in the description as well as in the pinned comment for where you can get some of this stuff. So that way, if you wanna start sealing up food for yourself and your family for long periods of time, you're more than able to do so. And then of course you can shop around, find better deals or whatever you wanna do. I do wear gloves. It's just something I do to try to, you know, keep some of my filth from entering the food and everything else. But at the same time, it's just working with all this different packaging and stuff that's just been all over warehouses and everything else. It's kind of a dirty process. So I do wear some form of gloves and then, once you get the bag open, which like I said, I'm not gonna be too worried about being extremely sanitary here, but at the same time, try our best. Go ahead and put it into the bucket. Now, this five gallon bag will obviously be taller than the bucket. Once you fill it, 
in the sense of forming it to the bucket to a degree to where you have a pretty good opening and it gives it enough wall space in between the bucket and the Mylar bag itself. It's easy to fill and you need this excess bag at the top in order to easily seal it up once you put the food product inside. So we're gonna go ahead and start with pinto beans today because they're one of my favorites and they're a staple of the prepper community when it comes to long-term food storage. They're easy to store and what is nice is that when it comes to the pinto beans or even like the long grain rice and everything else like that, these 20 pound bags fit in a five gallon mylar bag pretty well. It actually leaves about probably 25% of headspace in the bucket after everything's said and done, which means you can either add some other vacuum sealed items on top, maybe some seasoning, something along those lines. But at the end of the day, this will fill in a five gallon bag, no problem. You could actually add more beans if you wanted, but I prefer having the excess amount of bag at the top to work with when it comes to sealing it at the end of the process. So I'll get in here a little bit closer so you can see me putting in the food, how I do the oxygen absorber, how we seal the top and get this thing said and done for you. All right, let's throw the pinto beans in. Always have an excellent Damascus knife laying around for any of these tasks. I highly suggest it. Okay. And then you're just gonna pour the beans right into the Mylar bag. Don't forget, when I said about being sanitary earlier, this food all still has to be cooked. And once it's cooked, anything you contaminate the food with will likely be cooked away and taken care of. So don't be too concerned about cross-contamination in this process, because after the fact, when you do get back into this food and try to eat it, you're gonna cook it. It's gonna kill whatever you put inside of it. Just keep that in mind. Now, this is in here, good to go. You kinda wanna beans a little bit more staged in the sense of having a flat surface to work with. And then at the same time, you can see that this 20 pound bag of beans fits in here perfectly with plenty of extra space on top. So yes, 20 pounds of beans or 20 pounds of rice in a five gallon Mylar bag in a five gallon bucket is kind of the perfect magical balance. So just keep that in mind. Now we're going to grab one of these 2000 CC oxygen absorbers. Now to keep something else in mind is that once you open these in the sense of the package they come in, you need to use them or you need to re-vacuum seal them back into another package because they will eventually go bad from being exposed to too much oxygen. And in fact, from these sitting out for a little bit now, they're actually starting to get hot to the touch. So just keep that in mind. You wanna only use the ones or pull the ones out of their packaging that you're going to use in that moment. And then you wanna re-vacuum seal the ones you don't use. So if you don't have a vacuum sealer, that is something to keep in mind for when you order these, you wanna make sure you're only getting enough for what you're gonna use them for, all right? Throw that right on top. Now, the main reason behind that is because you're pulling the oxygen out of the packaging. It's gonna make everything last longer inside. And especially with the empty void space that's gonna be remaining here at the top of the bag, this will help deflate some of that and suck some of that oxygen in. So that's why I put it right on top. Okay, you can see there's still plenty of room to work with. And these bags are very durable. You can pull on them. You know they're gonna be good to go for the long term. And now for the sealing process. Like I said before, we're going to use a flat iron for your hair, right? Because it's easy, it's handheld, it's portable, and it gets hot enough to do the job. I set this one on about a medium setting. And what I do is once I go to actually seal it up, I hold it on there for about 10 seconds, and then it seems to do a pretty solid job. Your mileage may vary based on what type of flat iron you're using, but I would start on the lower heat settings and work your way up so you're not doing anything damaging to the bag in the process by being too hot or whatever else it might be. So these are things you're gonna kinda have to figure out, but this is just your standard flat iron, like I said, on a medium setting. And one thing I am going to refer you to the Provident Prepper for is they do a lot of good stuff when it comes to food storage. And one thing that I stole from them in this technique is the fact that they start with the center with basically just like a quick tab here and then they add another tab at each of the quarter marks on the sides and what that does is kind of helps maintain the stability of the bag and then eliminates bubbling after the fact. So I thought that worked pretty well. So I've been using that technique and it's something that you can use as well. And then I will go ahead and link a um, uh, uh, link to their video up here on the screen somewhere so you can check that out if that's something you're interested in. But definitely another good channel to follow. So, all right. Go ahead, get this lined up pretty well. You want it to be pretty flat. 
And now some of you are asking, well, why aren't you going to vacuum seal it, right? Well, you can vacuum seal if you'd like, but the thing is, is that you can only vacuum seal so well. These bags need a commercial vacuum sealer to work. And then at the end of the day, if you have them in a bucket, they're extremely hard to use. So the oxygen absorber is going to do its job. We're going to get the last bit of air out towards the end of this process. And then basically it's not perfectly vacuum sealed, but it is protected from the elements and from additional oxygen or moisture. And it'll do the job of long-term food storage without the need for a proper vacuum seal. So I just wanted to mention that. I'll go ahead and get the center tab taken care of. I hold it on there for 10 seconds, which seems to kind of be the magic number here when using this hair iron. But like I said, that's something you're probably going to have to figure out based on the equipment that you're using. Okay. And I probably already lost count, but I feel like we're there. And as you can see, I have a good seal right here in the center tab. And like I was suggested to by the Provident Prepper, I go ahead and come over here and go about a quarter of the way and do a similar tab. And that felt like 10 seconds and I kept it quiet so that you could count with me in my head. And then I'll do the same thing over here on this side as well. And like I said, what this does is it helps to prevent bubbling um, when you're actually sealing it across the way. And it gives you a little bit more stability in the bag in the sense that now it has um, basically like a hem across the top. So it lets it stand up a little bit more rigidly for you. Okay, so you can see we got our three tabs here sealed up pretty nicely. And what I do now is come right across the top like so. And you want to start with the edge and you want to make sure that you reach the entire edge of the bag where the seam is already. And that way it goes seam to seam and gets as good of a seal as you can possibly get without damaging the actual integrity of the bag. So I'm going to hold that on there. And you're probably timing me based on the fact that you have a time bar. I might not be at exactly 10 seconds in this video due to the fact that I can't count and talk at the same time, but I also don't want you to be bored listening to nothing while I count in my head. So you're welcome for whichever way is better for you. Now, got a good seal here, and I don't know if you can see this, but I'll show you all this close up in a, uh, a quick still image here just so you can kind of check it out. But I'll get on close here so you can see that this is a nice seal and that these flat irons do a great job of taking care of the mylar. And the thing about mylar is that it's different layers inside of, of plastic basically and um, I believe aluminum, but at the end of the day, you're basically melting everything together here to make a permanent seal. And that is why mylar is such a good solution for long-term food storage. So I'm going to come across here and we're going to keep sealing it up right across the top. And I usually hold the iron right here at the end and add additional pressure so that it makes a solid seal. It's another one of the reasons why I wear gloves while I do this process, because you don't have to act like you're super tough and burn your hands during this whole thing when things like mechanics gloves are so easily available. So do yourself a favor, wear some gloves and don't be too cool to not burn your hands. All right. Okay. Seal's looking pretty good. That might have been a little shorter than 10 seconds, but for demonstration purposes, I think we're doing okay. And now I've reached the center tab that I created in the beginning here. So we know that we're making the right kind of progress. And then once you can't necessarily reach straight across with the flat iron any longer, I just come in at a little bit of an angle. And as long as the seam and the seal um, connects to each other throughout the process, you're good to go. Like I said, the whole point of this is to make things easy, obtainable for the average person, and at the same time, seal stuff up for the long term without trying to make everything so complicated. All right, we're trying to keep things easy here. We're trying to get people in the door when it comes to preparedness. And I want more and more people to have more food put away for 2022 because I honestly believe it's going to be the biggest priority in the sense of prepping that we all need to pay attention to. There's so much going on in the world that I can't rely on the fact that food is just going to remain plentiful for the rest of our days, right? Okay, so we have a good strong seal here. We're now past the halfway point, which means I can actually come back from the other side. Now, one reason why I do it this way is because I leave a tiny hole here kind of towards the middle at the very end, which is where I get all the remaining air out. You'll see that here in just a second, but we'll go ahead and start sealing this up from the side. And then we're using where we had that tab before as kind of a reference point. And I might've got this at a little bit of an angle this time, but we're going to be okay. Like I said, this is demonstration purposes. Take your time. Don't be distracted. Like, I don't know, recording a video or something like that when you do it on your own and that way you do it the right way. And then you're happy about the fact that you're actually counting to 10 or whatever time you figure out with your hair iron, because you know, 
I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't have a lot of experience using flat irons. So this, you know, is the most I've ever used one before and I just don't know how they all work. This is the one we have in our house and this is the only one I have any reference for. So, you know, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some kind of a, a cosmetics ex expert or anything like that, as I'm sure you can tell by my appearance. Now, go ahead and seal this up right to the edge of the center, but leave a gap so there's still a hole in the bag. Not a hole in the bag, but there's a hole at the top. That way we can purge the remaining air out of the Mylar bag before fully sealing the entire package, which I think is obviously an important thing to do. Um, we wanna get as much air out as we can manually. And if you have a vacuum sealer that has a straw or a hose attachment, this is where you could enter that hose into the bag and really suck all the additional air out if you'd like. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just gonna throw that out there for those of you who have access to a machine like that, you can use that for this purpose. But for those of us who don't, we're gonna leave a little spot here right at the top that's not sealed so that we can squeeze the remaining air out, okay? And don't forget, we have that oxygen absorber in there right now. It's gonna do all the extra work for us at the very end. I'll set this down for one second. And so we're gonna let the seal take place. Now that it's cooled off for a second, it should be good to go. We have this little part right here, which is gonna let all the additional air out. And we can go ahead and push the air out like so. And you can hear the air all came right out, no problem and you wanna get as much of it out as you can, okay? But then you're still gonna to need to get a good seal here. So you still need a little bit of slack at the top in order to finish that seal right with that little air pocket was that you left, okay? And now we have the air pocket exposed and you can come at it right from the top if you like and seal it right back up, okay? And then you're gonna probably wanna do this um, a couple times to the left and right of the air pocket, just in case you maybe missed it or overlapped a little too much to one side. This kind of helps me make sure that the whole thing is sealed up the proper way. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and just make sure. And things can get a little slippery around here if you're not careful. So definitely pay attention to what you're doing. You're gonna to have to have steady hands in order to be precise with any of this kind of sealing that we're trying to accomplish because it will just slide down the bag due to the fact that the Mylar material itself is slick and then the heat will just make it that much slicker when you're applying something like a hair iron to it, considering most of them use a ceramic element, um, which you know is gonna be slick as well. Okay, so got that fully sealed up. Obviously don't burn your house down. Make sure you put the hair iron back somewhere safe. And now that it's had a chance to cool off for a second here, we can kind of test out whether or not the seal is good. So you want to push down on the bag. And just if there is air left, which there probably will be a little bit, just make sure it can't escape. And this one looks pretty well sealed. As you can tell, there's no air bubbles really coming out. You can see that there's still some air in, but it's not able to go anywhere. So we have a nice sealed up Mylar bag with a 2000 cc oxygen absorber in here. Now is when you wanna go ahead and label it. And labeling is important just so you can keep track of your preps, make sure that you're using your rotations properly. If you do have to ever get into your emergency food, you wanna eat the oldest food first, of course. So I'm gonna put what it is, which is beans, right? And then the date, which is nice and easy because it's the first of the year, which is a great day, like I said, to do these things. I would use this day to seal up more food and probably change out your batteries on your red dots. That's just my su suggestion, okay? And then pop that right here on the seal because it's nice and flat. And then boom, we have beans 1122 ready to rock. Go ahead, and like I said, you see there's about 25% more space in this bucket. So I could throw in um, some vacuum sealed rice or vacuum sealed salt or maybe uh, some seasoning or a few other things in here to kind of make the entire thing a package deal, even some bouillon maybe, in order to have better beans at the end of the day. But you wanna get the bucket lid on, and I always push on the center a little bit while I seal it because it kind of helps push the air out. Okay. And then don't label the lid. If you've ever been in the food business, you know that that's just not appropriate. You gotta label the container itself. And just like we did with the label on the bag, I am going to write the same label on a piece of masking tape with really terrible handwriting because who writes with gloves on anyway, right? And then we're gonna go ahead, throw this on the bucket. 
You know, you buy this professional grade scotch masking tape and then it still rips like any of the crappy stuff would. So it makes you really question a lot of decisions you made in your life. And then I'm gonna throw this right on front here just so we can see it for our own purposes in the prepping. And there you have it. All right, hopefully this process helped you. Hopefully this gave you some ideas about how easy it can be to store food away for a very long period of time. And if you have any questions for me at all, please leave them in the comments below. There's a great community here, a lot of people that will help you be better prepared and answer some of your questions when it comes to food storage. Make sure this is a priority for you in 2022. I guarantee you food is gonna be a hot commodity at some point in time here very soon. And it's something that you and I can maintain a certain level of freedom with if we have access to enough of it. It also buys us time to get through any crisis together so that way on the other side, we're not desperate and desperation leads people to make bad decisions and that's one thing we don't want to do in 2022 so hopefully this video was informative anything else you need from me go to magicprepper.com and that is going to be it for magic prep